Hello, I'm Alexandra Zaharia, psychologist and doctoral researcher. In today's short video, I would like to present you the work I've been done in the Developmental Imaging and Psychopathology Lab from University of Geneva under the supervision of Dr. Maud Schneider and Professor Stefan Elias, and therefore provide a short description of the results of the article that has been published in August 2018. The title of the research we conducted is Face processing in 22Q11 deletion syndrome, atypical development and visual scanning alterations. Among other important clinical and health-related aspects, the 22Q11 deletion syndrome is characterized by social-emotional difficulties, such as anxiety, shyness, difficulties to initiate and maintain social interactions. Research studies on other neurodevelopmental disorders such as Down or Willem syndromes, have previously shown that face processing abilities play an important role in social interactions and that difficulties related to that would contribute to their social functioning. Therefore, there is growing interest to investigate face processing abilities also in 22Q11 deletion syndrome. Face processing refers to the way in which we extract the most relevant information while looking at the face and then using this information in our social interactions, for instance, during face recognition or during emotion recognition. We can identify two types of face processing, configural face processing and featural face processing. Configural face processing refers to the way we perceive the spatial distances between the features of a face, the distances between eyes, the distances between nose and mouth. This type of processing is important to remember faces and recognize emotions. Featural face processing refers to how we perceive and identify the different features a face has such as the color or shape of the eyes or mouth. This helps us to distinguish faces one from another. Previous research has shown that while we have well-developed featural face processing skills from the moment we are born, the configural face processing develops only later and we reach proficiency in adulthood only. This particular type of processing seems then susceptible to be affected by development. However, both types of face processing are important to reach adaptive skills in social communication and behavior, as well as to understand others' emotional states. In order to investigate the development of configural and featural face processing in children, adolescents, and young adults with 22Q11 deletion syndrome, we designed an eye tracking task. This particular methodology gives the opportunity to examine the participant's eye gaze. Thanks to the near infrared light sent to the retina by microprojectors, the eye tracking is capable to estimate where on the image or on the screen or for how long the gaze of participant focuses. During this face discrimination task, which we called Jane task, participants were asked to identify differences between the faces presented on the screen. Faces were modified on a configural level, that means distances between features were changed or they were modified on a feature level. That means features were changed. In this case, eyes and mouth were changed. Results reported in the current article are based on 75 participants with 22Q11 deletion syndrome and 84 typically developed participants. First of all, behavior results based on the accuracy of correct answers, showed that identifying changes on a configural level was difficult for both groups. However, this specific condition raised even more difficulties for participants with 22Q11 deletion syndrome 
compared to the typically developed participants. Developmental trajectories show that these difficulties in configural phase processing persist with age in participants with 22Q11 deletion syndrome, while the typically developed participants will improve disability with age. Second, eye tracking measures allowed us to examine the time spent on face features. Results replicate findings from previous studies examining smaller samples of participants and indicate that indeed children, adolescents and young adults with 22Q11 deletion syndrome look more at the mouth and less at the eyes compared to typically developed participants. Eye tracking data also showed that the bias towards mouth observed in participants with 22Q11 deletion syndrome appears during the first two fixations on the face in the early phase of face processing. This said, the visual exploration of the mouth gradually increases from the first fixation towards the second fixation in participants with 22Q11 deletion syndrome, while typically developed participants will gradually explore more the eye region from the first fixation towards the second fixation. Our study also shown that typically developed participants will have different patterns of visual exploration depending on the type of differences in faces, which is not the case for participants with 22Q11 deletion syndrome. To conclude, the present study showed an atypical development of face processing and abnormal visual scan paths during face processing in 22Q11 deletion syndrome, providing a more complete picture of this specific issue. We assume that these characteristics identified in participants with 22Q11 could contribute to their difficulties in social domain from specific perception biases in face recognition or emotion recognition to impairments in social interaction. Nevertheless, clinical implications of the atypical development in face processing should be further investigated in future research. Thank you for your attention.